everyone. Welcome back to the Airy Knits podcast. My name is Ariel and I am so happy that you are here. And yeah, this is a video podcast where I pretty much just talk about knitting things. I show what I am currently working on, maybe some things I've finished, some new cast-ons, and I sometimes also crochet and sometimes sew. So I will also show those things as well on here if I end up doing those things as well, but I mostly just knit and yeah, I I don't have too many finished objects this week, but I have a lot of new cast on, so I'm pretty excited to show that to you on here because there's just been a lot of casting on this week and yeah, so today it is Saturday, January 21st and it's been it's been kind of cold here in Seattle. It's been a bit rainy. And there was actually some surprise snow today, which is really strange. Like none of it was sticking like to the ground. But yeah, I think it was sometime in the afternoon. I looked outside the window and there was like some really like big chunks of snow coming down, which was just really unexpected, but kind of cool. And so yeah, I'm just staying indoors now and just being really cozy and speaking of being cozy indoors I am wearing something that is really nice and cozy so I showed this last week it was a finished test knit that I finished last week and so now I'm wearing it this week I'm wearing a tank top underneath by the way and yeah this is the Soho blouse by Kadri and I'll stand up so you can see it Here's what it looks like and yeah I'm really happy with it here's what the sleeve length looks like on me and it is a nice v-neck with an i-cord edging also has some slip stitches going down the sides of the body and the arm the sleeves and I used Paisley Knits Swimming Surrey base, which is the Surrey silk base, in and I held it double and I used the colorway Kyoto from the Japan collection. And I actually have bought the colorway Kyoto in like a few more or a few different yarn bases because I really, really like the color. It is like a very gray, gray, but has like some brown. And of course, some kind of pinky tones in there as well. And it just looks, it looks really, really nice on the Surrey. Actually, it looks nice on all the bases, but for sure on the Surrey. Like, I really like how it looks. And it also feels very comfortable. And I'm just, again, I'm obsessed with Surrey. So any kind of pattern that I can use Surrey to make it with is just like everything to me. So really like this top. Oh, also... Final measurements for me, I made the size extra small and I ended up using the US 7 size needles. And final measurements, I got 38 inch circumference. And so for me, that's seven inches of positive ease. And so that's kind of what that looks like on me. Hopefully that helps. And yeah, keep an eye out and follow Kadri on Instagram or check out her Ravel Ravelry or wherever uh, you keep track of uh, other knit, knit, knitwear designers. Um, this is, a, I think, going to be a really, really popular pattern. It definitely gives me vibes of cumulus blouse, but of course it is butter stitch and not stockinette stitch. And it's just a very lovely pattern and Highly recommend also using Surrey for it because it's a really cozy sweater and I'm really glad that the weather here has been cold enough to wear a Surrey sweater. It's just, it's so soft and comfortable and it just makes me really happy. So yeah, so that is what I am wearing today and it's again perfect for the weather. Very rainy and cold. So yeah. So. With that out of the way, I will show my one finished object for the week. And this is actually another test knit. And, oh, I should probably, there's a tie in the front. So let me just tie that so that hopefully we get a better view of what this looks like. 
I finished blocking it and so it kind of just, I just took it off of the, I usually dry it on towels on the ground or on, I have like a, a thing that has like little legs, it's like a mesh thing that you can stand up. But yeah, I literally just grabbed this so I didn't even like try it on yet, but here it is. Oh, it looks so cute on the camera. Okay. This is a test knit. This is the Azalea Cardigan by Joanne of Knitwear by Joanne. And this is a design that's going to be in her upcoming book. And so it's like my first time test knitting something that's going to be in a book. So that's pretty exciting. And I'm really excited for the other patterns in that book that's going to come out. And yeah, really happy I got to test knit this. Uh, for this, the yarn I use is the Rerum Natura Penelope in the colorway Av Avon. I, rem I remember I looked up how to say that color or the name last week and I forgot how it was. So, um, But of course, everything that I talk about hopefully will be in the descriptions down below so you can actually look up how that color is spelled. But I believe it translated to oat or oats so it is a yeah like an oatmeal kind of color and I really like how this turned out I love how the cables the bobbles and the stitch looks on this base and it feels wonderful and I also love I mean I really the thing that drew me to this pattern was this bow tie in the front. It's made with an I-cord and I just, I'm really, really liking bow ties at the moment. So any knitwear design that has bow ties, just there's something about it that I think is just so cute. Let me show you the back as well. So the back has similar cable and bobbles design as the front, but it has included here more cables and bobbles in that middle kind of section there. Yeah, so if it, it is a short sleeve cardigan and I'm really excited to wear this when the weather gets warmer. I think it'll be something that's like really cute to add on to something, just, you know, to wear over something. And yeah, I'm really excited about that. I made size two and I used US six size needles to make this and yeah what else I mean this is so this is the second time that I've used that Derrera Natura yarn and again it turned out lovely and I really like it so yeah it might be like my new favorite yarn so yeah again this worked up like pretty quickly I think I finish, I could finish one front panel in a day, like a weekend. And then the back kind of took me a bit longer. But sleeves also went by fast. I think I might have finished both sleeves in one day, like one weekend day. And because they're short sleeves, it means you don't have to knit like, you know, a whole entire sleeve. So that was fine. And yeah, so again, keep an eye out for this book to come out. I don't know when it's going to come out, but there's a lot of great patterns in there that I'm excited for, and I'm hoping to get that book when it does come out as well. So yeah, my one finished object, Azalea Cardigan. And let's see, I'll put this here. Okay, so with that, I think I honestly could have finished more things this week if I didn't decide to cast on like three projects, but that's just the way that it was going to be this week. So let me first start off with my works in, <laughs> works in progress that I've already shown on here, but I tried to make some progress this week. So first off, and I think this pattern, ooh, my yarn is falling everywhere. This pattern is going to just take me a while to finish so it'll just be appearing on here like probably if not every week maybe every other week or something 
but it is my one crochet project. So here it is. This is the Kelly Crew Neck by Alexi, two of wands. So it really doesn't look like anything yet, but it's going to be a sweater. And it is worked flat and it works from the back, the bottom of the back, all the way up to the shoulders and then starts working down the front. So as you can see, I did the back here, got over to the front, made the hole for your head, <laughs> and then working down the front. And so I did make a bit more progress on that. I finally started on a third skein of yarn. And yeah, just keep going on that. I had some gauge problems with this, like in the most recent week and last week actually, where I had to rip back. I had to keep doing that actually because my gauge was too big, so I was crocheting too loosely, like it, the width was not matching up with the back. And then now I think I'm actually crocheting a bit more tightly. So it's, I don't know, it's going to be a learning, a learning process. And also, I think I mentioned this before, but this is my first crochet sweater. Like, I think I've crocheted, so I have crocheted like a shawl before, which sizing for shawls don't really like matter too much. And then I knit like a tank top or a vest and that came out fine, like that was fine. But for bigger projects like a sweater, I've never crocheted such a big project garment before. So it's interesting to see that like my crochet gauge gets really off depending on the day. And so for something that I have to kind of like keep going back to, something that I've learned that my gauge for crocheting just kind of goes all over the place depending on the day. But so far, like instruction wise, like it's been going fine. I really like the stitch. I think it's called the double herringbone stitch. And I really like that. Also the color, again, I know, sorry if it gets kind of boring because I do kind of, I've mentioned this top so many times because I'm still not done with it, but the yarn I'm using is from Sorella in the classic sport base in the colorway Jazz in the Park. And I really like it. I think it's getting me to kind of explore with more green colors. So that's pretty exciting, I think, for me. So I'm looking forward. I do really like working on this because I like the colors of the yarn. So that's kind of what keeps me going. And yeah, so that is that. I think if I want to take a guess, I might have finished like this much from last week. So that's how much progress I got, I think. And I am doing size extra small and I'm using a 3.75 millimeter F crochet hook. Okay, so this yarn also just kind of got tangled in all of my other projects here. So we're just gonna have to figure that out. Okay, I'll just put it back down there. Next up, okay. We're bring this is another project that I think is going to just be coming back every so often in a video. This is actually another crochet project and another pattern by Alexi, Two of Wands. This is the Midnight Jasmine Wrap. And it's, I think it's longer than the screen, but it's about, I think I can hold, it's like the width of my arms stretched out right now and so thankfully it works or the way I'm working it is from the widest end and it's a triangle so it'll each row I do there will be less flowers to make but yeah so for this pattern you just crochet one flower at a time and you connect it as you go and you also weave in ends as you go which I think is going to be perfect because no one I think wants to weave in this many ends at the end and it actually, because you're doing one flower at a time, it doesn't feel weird to weave in ends as you go. I've never done it for a knitting project before. I always just weave in at the end, but for this one, I think, yeah, weaving in as you go is the way to do it. I am finally on row four. So, so yeah, 
we're slowly, slowly getting there. I do really like for this project that you can, it's really easy to pick back up and to just like add a couple flowers and then feel pretty, pretty good about that. Um, and just like visually, like because with like knitting or crocheting, when you do it by rows, you normally like count by rows or you want to know how many rows you did. But for this one with each flower, like each flower just takes, I think it might take me a little less than, is it five minutes? Maybe a little over five minutes actually. For one flower, I'm kind of a, does that make me a slow crocheter? Not that it matters, but does, I think it takes me about five, in between five and 10 minutes for one flower. So yeah, when you just do one, it's kind of a little short amount of time and you can be like, I added on one flower. And I also really like the colors I chose for this. I kind of just went with a combination of just, I don't know, things I was feeling. And then I realized, I mean, it's not the same, but it kind of is giving me same, similar vibes to this colorway because there's some greens, there's like a pink, some browns, white, and I don't have a blue, but this kind of gray -y, purpley thing or color. Yeah, it kind of is giving me similar vibes, and so I really like that. And I, I didn't really talk about goals this year for my knitting or crafting, but one of my goals is to finish this this year. So, you know, I think I need to make maybe 100 more flowers. I think this might be around 60 flowers that I've made so far, and I think I need a, hundred, a little over 100 more, I think. But I think that's doable as long as I keep kind of working on this. So if I tell myself to at least like add a couple flowers or maybe just like at least one flower every week, cause that seems definitely doable. I don't, well, if I only do one a week, I don't think I'll finish this year, but it's one of those things where it kind of gets very addicting to do. So like once you do one flower, you're like, since I'm here, I should just add another flower and it, you just kind of keep going. So yeah, anyway, that's this again. And I, I am just gonna keep working on it. So it'll just keep popping up on my podcast for as long as it takes for me to finish it. So, but yeah, the goal is this year and I think it's possible. Yeah, okay. So now on to just all of my new cast-ons this week. And I was looking at it and I was actually surprised. Like I cast on all of this, this week or, and also the amount of progress I made on some of these. I'm kind of surprised that I did all of this this week, but need to show it to you. Okay, so I showed you this yarn last week and I mentioned I was going to make a, well, I had a test knit for this planned out. Sorry, I'm trying to just like untangle this. Okay. Also, there's, it's not, there's not much to show. Like you can't really see, and it's a little scrunched on my needles, but this is a test knit of the Dawn to Dusk Shacket by Tiff of Tiff Knit on Instagram. And yeah, I mean, this is what I've done so far. And I did finally connect under the arms and I maybe have like in two inches, maybe? Maybe one and a half under the arms. And so that's where I'm at right now. The yarn I am using is Derrerum Natura in the Gilead base, which is the worsted weight base. I believe it's worsted weight in the colorway Darjeeling. So it is a brown color, golden brown. So it's looking a bit more golden yellowy on camera, but it's definitely a bit more brown brown. But yeah, so that's what I have so far. And then the really cool detail I do wanna show is actually on the back. Eee, look at that. I think so this is, I forget, I think in the pattern she calls it like the piping. And it's, I think to mimic like on like those shirt jackets or shackets, 
that they have, I don't know if there's like a word for it, but you know how there's a section here and there's a little something. So I think that's a really cute design and I really like it. So yeah, that was pretty fun to make. And yeah, i am just been really liking working on this. I'm really liking the yarn. This is the first time I'm using the Gilead base and it is, it's nice. It doesn't, it's not, it feels wooly but not scratchy. Like it kind of reminds me of the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino base, which was actually another yarn that I was considering getting for this test knit, but I decided to go with this one because I wanted to try a new yarn and I'm glad I did. So I am just gonna keep working on that because I'm really excited to see how it turns out. Like all of the details, there's like everything, or there's so many parts to it that have these small details and I'm really excited to get to. So like, for example, like the piping on the back, I was really excited to do. And then joining under the arms, there's a nice just like side stitch detail that's fun to do while you keep going back and forth to make the body. There's going to be a, what is it called? It's not a split hem, but like a, I mean, I guess it kind of functions as a slip, uh, split hem, but it's, it, or it's a curved hem at the bottom, which I think will be fun and interesting to make as well. And the sleeves, I'm excited to see how the sleeves are made. And there's the cuff part just looks really cool. I think there's like a pleat in it. And so, yeah, there's just a whole bunch of things for this that I'm excited to get to work. So, yeah, I've just got to work through the body pretty much. Maybe at some point when I finish this ball of yarn through the body, I'll switch to and do the sleeves maybe. That's how I usually do my sweaters and probably my other cardigans too. So we'll see when we get there, but yeah. So this has been, this occupied a lot of my time at the beginning of last week. And then was there something else I needed to say about this? Oh, I am doing size one and I am using US size five needles for this. Okay. Oh, and I did have to go down I think like three needle sizes for this because I guess I knit kind of loosely or I knit more loose than Tiff, the designer. So yeah, I did have to gauge swatch a couple times to get this right. So hopefully it all turns out okay in the end. Yeah. Okay, next I want to talk about this because I have been saying that this is a thing I wanted to make. And now I finally cast it on and made some good progress. This is the Teddy Zip by Joanne, knitwear by Joanne. Okay, so it is worked bottom up. And so I have the hem here and then I've worked the body and these are holes for the pockets, which I'm really excited about. And this is the first time I am using boucle yarn. So I have some initial thoughts about like this whole thing. But first, um, I want to just mention which yarns I'm using. So for the boucle yarn, which is used in the body here, I am using Sorella in the colorway Sugar Mountain, which I can show you. This is, it looks really messy, so sorry, but this is how it kind of looks in the cake form. And it's, I wasn't, I didn't even think about it, about like how soft it might be, but it's very soft. And so I'm curious to see how, once it's worked up, like how it feels like wearing it. But right now, like holding this and doing the, it like feels really soft. So I'm excited to see, yeah, just like how this works up and then while I'm like wearing it, how, how the boucle yarn feels, but it's very squishy and airy and soft, yeah. And then last week I talked about this mishap I had and why it took me a bit longer than I was hoping to start this pattern 
because I wanted to, since I was spending kind of a lot of money on the boucle yarn to make this, I could not get myself to buy the matching yarn of it in, you know, because it's hand dyed yarn, it was just like a lot of yarn to buy. And so I decided to buy the boucle yarn, which is hand dyed yarn, and then substitute out the other yarn, which is, or will, is, at least I'm using a, is it DK? No, worsted, it's a worsted. I just dropped it. Um, a worsted weight yarn base. And I was going to swap it out with a 220 Cascade Superwash Merino yarn. And I, so I bought it online. The colors online just really don't match what it looks like in person to me. So this was the first one that I bought. I thought it would, it was called like Glacier Gray. So I really kind of wanted something gray-y, but it just looked more blue. Like it just, it do doesn't match, I think. And so I ended up having to buy something, a different yarn or the same brand, but a different, and the same kind of yarn, but just a different color. And when I got it in the mail, I was like, did I get the same color on accident? But no, I got a different color and it is called, it is called Moonbeam. And on the website, it looks a lot more, it looks more like this color, like this oat color. It looked way more like this oat color. Okay, my lighting here is kind of bad, so colors aren't gonna really show, but trust me. So online, it looks a lot more like this oat color. But when I got it, I was like, is this purple? Like it, I mean, next to each other, you can tell a difference. The first one I bought was a lot more blue purple, but by itself, I mean, it looks great. Actually, it looks, looks great. I'm OE on camera, but in some lights, I mean, it, it really kind of looks purple. When you compare it to this, it doesn't. Does it look more gray? It does, but by itself, it, it really looked purple. And actually, when I, I mean, on this, doesn't it look purple? Like the boucle purpley pink yarn is really bringing out the purpleiness of this yarn. Like, I promise it's the same, it's the same one. I didn't accidentally cast on with the other one. So I don't know, but I decided to just go with it. And at first I wasn't sure. I was like, oh man, I don't know if I need to go back, but I think I like it. Like, I think it'll be okay. Although let me know in the comments down below, like, should I just, no, no, no. What well, I like how this is going to turn out and I think it matches fine and it's gonna look fine. The blending is, is fine and I'm just gonna keep going with it. But do let me know what you think down below, maybe. So yeah, and then I do have a couple more things. Let me just show you kind of a bigger swatch of what this looks like. So, I was kind of surprised. So I am holding the boucle double and then the worsted yarn just by itself. So I'm holding, it's like three strands. And you can tell like compared to here, like it's more fuzzy, but it's not as fuzzy as I was expecting it to be. Like I was kind of expecting to not be able to see the knit stitches like at all, but maybe it's kind of good. You can because counting rows is it's still a little hard but it's not too bad and it still is like a little fuzzy and a different texture for sure than if I wasn't using a boucle yarn and yeah it's going to be a very thick jacket but it'll be good I think for when it's really cold or if I just want something that's you know a bigger thicker jacket to wear and yeah I guess I 
I already have thoughts of making this again because I do, I did envision making this pattern that I was going to get a very fluffy jacket that was just like a teddy bear, like, like Joanne's sample jackets. So I think it's just the boucle might be a little bit diff, like the boucle yarn, I think that she used for her sample was more fluffy. And so that's how it ended up being more fluffy on her sample. So honestly, I think I'm going to continue making this jacket and I'm pretty sure I'm going to really like it, but I do want to make another one with a different boucle yarn. Probably just, I'll just get the same boucle yarn that she used for her sample because I do want that really fluffy looking jacket as well. But you know, this is still going to be great and probably really well worn because sometimes you just need, sometimes I just want a jacket to put on. And I love, I have so many knitted like cardigans and stuff, but there's sometimes I just want something big and bulky, like something like a blanket. So I am excited for the end product of this, but there was just a lot of things that went on before I got to cast this on. But yeah, so that's how that looks. And I will say actually, I think knitting on, what needle size is this? US 10 needles. And I actually, I think it might, the pattern might have called for 10 and, US 10 and a half needles. But, um, and it is, I still don't understand, like it's easy for me to look up the US number size, but it just doesn't really make any sense. But I can't remember the millimeters. But anyway, this one is six millimeter size needles. And I think it hurts my hands to knit with big size needles. So I don't know that I can finish it. Like I did, this is a lot to do in one week, but I think it kind of hurt my hands a lot. So I might have to slow it down for this. I guess the good thing is that because the stitches are so big or like, you know, the gauges, how would you say? Like there's less stitches to make a lot of fabric. So it won't take me that long if I have to take a lot of breaks in between to make it. But yeah, it's just a bit of a bummer that it kind of hurts my hands to knit this. So but yeah, again, we're going to keep on going and I'm really excited to see how this turns out. But I do kind of already have ideas on making a second one of this. So that is that. And oh, I do want to talk about boucle yarn. And, and other patterns I've seen, but I'll save that for one. I have one more new cast on to share. And so I'll talk about that first and then we'll get to the more talk story session of the podcast. Okay, so the last one that I have to share is one that I'm really excited about because, well, I feel like I say that about all of them, but this one I'm like really, really, really excited to start and cast on and like wind the yarn for. So I, should I, let me just, okay, what do I show first? Because the yarn is also like a big part of this project. Okay, I am making, so, and I casted this on yesterday because I really, really, really wanted to start it. I am making the Yoliday Shawl by Emily Curtis, Emily Kurt on Instagram. So I've already started it is a brioche shawl and um, it is a two color brioche, but for, I mean, for right now, so I am using four colors. I'm planning on using four colors. So right now I am just using one color, but I think this might be my first like brioche. Like I'm pretty sure I've done like half brioche before, but I can't really like remember what the differences are, but this might be the first time I'm doing actual brioche is that also two color brioche or is that something different but anyway this is like the first time I'm doing something where you or the brioche technique where you have to you knit like the same row twice so you do like right side right side wrong side wrong side and yeah I'm I'm again only using one color for what I'm working on right now but I'm really excited to reach the part where I'm gonna start 
switching in another color and so I'll actually be working with two colors at a time. But yeah, so this is what I have so far and the yarn I am using for this I think will be the perfect match. So I am using Explore Knits and Fibers and how do I, okay, how do I show this all? I cake all of them up because I was too excited about them. I'll just hold them down here and stand up, I guess. This is from the Winter Solstice collection. Oh, that looks so good. Okay, so these are from the Winter Solstice collection, and I bought the box, like, you could buy the boxes, and they were delivered sometime last, like, in in time for actual winter solstice last year and then she had a pre-order at the beginning of this year for the colors and I bought the box with the variegated colorways so I only got the variegated colorways and I got it in the Denali sock base I'll just show it again here because it's so pretty and cute together and it took all of my willpower to not buy anything from when she did a pre-order for this collection because one of my goals this year is to get more, get through more of my yarn stash because I have a lot of really pretty colors that I love. And I told myself I already have these four colors and as much as I would have loved to buy, I really was considering buying this first color in the Surrey base to make a sweater. There's going to be plenty more yarn, pretty yarn that comes out that I could buy and I already have this colorway. So anyway, I resisted, but these colors are so good and I'm so happy that I do have one skein of each. And the colors are, this first one is Petricor. I think, I don't know if that's how you say it. Oh, I hope the camera focuses. It is the prettiest, like, creamy white. I want to say oat again because just the thing I have, my azalea cardigan kind of has a similar oat color vibe, but it has these hints of like this like beige gold pink, like really small hints of pink. And it's really pretty. It's really, really, really pretty. And then also this is the order that I am planning on doing the Yolliday shawl in. This next one is Apricity, which is a very like pretty sunset looking color, has orange, pinky orange, purple, and yeah, it starts to get hints of purple in there, which I think fades really nicely, and because they were made to be kind of like a fade, which I love, oh my gosh. Okay, this next one is Evenfall. And I'm not really like a dark purple blue kind of person, but this is very, very pretty. And then the last one is Midwinter, which is just a dark blue purple. And I was not sure. I was actually planning on making something from, so Sarah um, S. Knits on Instagram, she's a knit wear designer and she designed a lot of patterns to go with the winter solstice collection for the tonals and also the variegated colors and I was planning on doing probably just I told myself that oh I'll probably just make one of the patterns for this because then I'll be able to actually like see because I again like there are four different colors one skein of each and so I have no idea what I would make with it. I usually when I make stuff it's just one color, one color way for a project. So I was like, I don't know what to make with I would want to ideally make them in one project versus doing something like make socks, a pair of socks with each color. I guess you could do like striped socks with each color. But anyway, when the Yolliday Shawl by Emily Curtis came out I knew right away because 
It looks so good in a fade, and I've never done like a fade project before that I was like, oh, she, I mean, she used mini scans for her fade, but I was like, wait, I could use these colors as a fade for the holiday shawl. And I think yardage wise, the four skeins should work out. So I think it's going to look really good. Like I'm really excited. I am almost at the part in the shawl where I can, what I want to do is I'll do sections of one color and then do the two color to start fading into the next color and do that in you know the same color and then do the two color fade into the next color and so on and so i am almost at the part where i am going to decide to start adding in and start fading in this color and so i'm really excited to do that i'm kind of hoping i can get to that part today i actually wanted to try and get there yesterday but I just started it yesterday, so that was kind of like too ambitious. But anyway, it's it's my favorite thing that I'm knitting on right now, and I'm really excited. I'm also, last year, at the end of last year, when it was like cold and snowy, I actually finally went out, like outside, <laughs> into the world, wearing a shawl as a scarf. And it was so cozy, and it made me want to make more shawls because then I can wear them like scarves and they were like really comfortable to wear. So I kind of see more shawl making in my future this year. So I'm starting with the holiday shawl and I think it'll also be a great pattern to like, like it's, I think it'll be really easy to adjust the length because you just keep going and increasing. And so I think at whatever length you want you can either stop or you can keep going if you have more yarn and so I think that'll also be like great for maybe in the future if I look at all of my leftover skeins that if there's a nice fade that goes on that I could make the holiday shawl again and because it is brioche I think it's going to be really really soft and squishy so yeah it is my favorite thing that I'm knitting on right now so it's going to get a lot of get a lot of love, I think, this week. So, but I can't forget my test knits. So, yeah. Although I only have one test knit now that I'm not finished knitting with on yet, which is the shacket. But yeah. So, also, I'm not sure. If I I don't think I said, but I am doing the fingering weight version because I'm using a fingering weight yarn. But the pattern also has instructions for DK weight for the holiday shawl, which is really awesome. So DK or fingering weight, you can make the shawl. And yeah, that is all of my whips or my works in progress. And yeah, I think I was thinking that this was going to be a bit of a shorter video because I didn't have that many finished objects, but I did have a lot of works in progress. So but some of them were also ones I've shown before. But anyway, so that is it for kind of the showing you what I worked on this week kind of content. And, but before, okay, so before we kind of like sign off and finish the episode, I did want to mention, so I'm pretty sure it was this week that La Mercerie, which is the yarn shop on Bainbridge Island here in Seattle, they announced that Explore Knits and Fibers is coming or going, they're going to La Mercerie for a pop up in March. And I am just beyond excited about it. I, I am going to go. And I, I'm just, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, I am so excited about it. And also they announced that they they are not only bringing in colorways that that have been colorways in the past, but they're making like more colorways that are like Seattle inspired, which is just so cool. And I cannot wait to see what those colors look like. And so also I am really happy that I have been a bit more, a bit more resistant on buying yarn so far this year because I am going to go all out. Like there's, <laughs> I'm not gonna hold back 
when this pop-up happens. So I am just, I'm thinking, okay, save some yarn money so that when this pop-up happens, I'm just gonna like, whatever I like, I am going to buy. So, so yeah, I'm just really excited about that. Can't wait to hear more. And yeah, I am also hoping, I was thinking, should I say this? Because if it doesn't happen, I'll be a little sad. This holiday shawl, I am hoping that I can finish this by the pop-up date because, and I'm hoping, if it's in March, I think it'll still be cold enough. Like, <laughs> so my idea is I want to finish this and wear it there because it is Emily Curtis's pattern and she works at La Mercerie, so I don't know if that's weird, like for me to show up and be like, oh look, I knitted your pattern. I feel like it might be cool, but yeah, so I'm thinking I want to do that because Emily Curtis is going to be there. And also I am using Explore Knits yarn for this and it's the Explore Knits pop-up. And so I thought that would be kind of cool. So that is like my goal, but I'm not going to like go crazy and lose sleep over it if I can't knit it by then. But that is kind of what my thoughts are on that. And yeah, so that's the pop-up that I'm really excited about in Seattle. And then, oh, I said that I had things about boucle yarn that I wanted to talk about. Okay, so I guess while I say that, I'll just like hold one up and just like show it again. So the boucle yarn, I don't, I haven't actually looked up about it. So I don't even know what kind of like fiber this is, but the, as far as the texture, like I think that's the biggest thing is the texture is like very, how, how would you, it's very like curly. And so, it's not like just a straight flat yarn. It's just very like, it has all of these little curls in there. And so it makes it very soft and fluffy. And this is the first time that I'm working with it. And so I'm just trying to like feel it out. So far, so good. And it seems like boucle yarn is going to be like the new trend or is the new trend right now. So I do see buying more boucle yarn in my future. And what I am actually really excited about, there's a couple things I'm really excited about. So Sari Nordland had a test knit call for a teddy vest, which is a vest that ha is made with boucle yarn. And it looks so cute. And I unfortunately did not get it. I think I was a bit too late to sign up for it. But I do want to make it when that pattern comes out. So that is going to be in the works like I am that is something that I want to make in the future with boucle yarn and I think because for the main parts of the body it's just boucle yarn that'll give me a bit more of an idea on how maybe it looks and feels because right now the thing that the teddy zip that I'm working on it's boucle but held with another non boucle yarn and so I would like to make something that has that kind of just uses the boucle yarn, if that makes sense. So the teddy vest, I think that's what it's called. It's by Sari Nordland. So I want to make that. She also just posted either yesterday or this morning on Instagram that she made a cardigan that I'm pretty sure is with boucle yarn. And she was like, "Are pe would people be interested in a pattern for it? Because she just made it for herself. And I think she's planning on making a pattern for it. So if and when she does... I also want to make that and then the one that I'm actually the most excited about is another pattern by Joanne, Knitwear by Joanne. She So the pattern's not out yet and there's no test knit call out yet for it I think but she showed that she made a little pouch like it's it is so it looks like the Lululemon pouches that have like the buckle and it's just like I mean, I think most people wear it over their shoulder and it's a pouch that just looks like an oval, but it has a zipper. If you can imagine that with my hand motions, but it is with boucle yarn. And so it's like a fluffy pouch and it looks so cute. And I think would also be perfect for gifts, like to make for people. And I really want to make it. And so I'm kind of hoping that I have leftover of this boucle yarn to make that but also I'll probably just like buy more boucle yarn 
to make that as well. But it seems like it'd be good for leftovers since it'll be kind of small. Like it's not a sweater. It looks like it's about this size, I think. So, so yeah, I think the only thing is I never, well, I have once, I think, sewn on a zipper onto a knitting project, which is also another Joanne uh, pattern. And all the other things were just, like, if I sewed on anything, it was buttons. So, yeah, zippers are still kind of scare me a little bit. Actually, yeah, this teddy zip is going to have a zipper because it's a jacket. So we'll see how that goes. I just, I don't know, something about sewing on zippers scares me. I think it's because I'm like, how do you know what size zipper to get? I'll probably wait until I'm done with the jacket, like knitting it and then blocking it and then measure it. I think that'll probably be the best idea to do that just to make sure I get the right size zipper. Yeah, so, but anyway, that's just, that's just how it goes. It's going to look really great with the zipper, so yeah. But then also I need to look for zippers. Where do you guys buy zippers if you do buy zippers for knitwear stuff? Because I, I don't know. I'm not really sure where to look to buy stuff. So anyway, that is kind of it on the rambling part of the podcast, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really just, again, really excited about everything that I'm working on. Who knows? I might cast on something else this weekend, something new, but maybe we'll have a finished object this next or next week. I'm not sure, but I'm loving everything that I'm working on right now. And yeah, so happy weekend or which, you know, whatever day that you're watching this. Hope you're having a great day. And I'm hoping that maybe it's a bit more sunny where you are because it is a bit gloomy here right now. But I do like staying indoors and I like being cozy. So if you enjoy that too, I hope that you are staying cozy and doing lots of knitting if that's what makes you happy and what you like to what you like to do and I again always love when you share in the comments what you are working on and or things that you're planning on making because it gives me lots of ideas for future things to make as well so yeah uh, that'll be it for this podcast I hope you're all doing well and I will see you in the next one bye